All right, y'all, fasten your seatbelts and hold on to the handlebars. Wait, carriages didn't have handlebars back then. Nor seatbelts. Okay, well, uh, you're gonna wanna hang on to something because this is gonna be a bumpy ride. In the words of Lady Whistledown, congratulations and stamina are in order for the Duke and Duchess. They have proclaimed their love to each other and now they're on their way to celebrate their honeymoon at the Duke's 100 year old estate, which is bigger than any hotel I've ever been to in all my life. And if they ever rent the rooms out, it'll probably cost a fortune when they list it on Airbnb. Literally, 30 seconds in and they're already kissing. Eh, not surprising. But this isn't a passionate kiss, not one that'll lead to, uh, any cleanup, but just a sweet, perfect way to start the episode kiss. Come on, even the way they look at each other now is a lot better than they were looking at each other last episode, if you know what I mean. No. <laughs> so they get to the castle or the estate, whatever it's called, it looks like a castle, and they're welcomed by the housekeeper, Mrs. Coulson, and, you know, instead of having a tour, like, Probably they should, because Daphne's never been there before. They have other plans. And what would those plans be, Simon? <laughs> Daphne, you would naturally assume that your husband would have you sleep in separate rooms? Oh, okay, well I guess that makes sense after what happened last time, but... You're not going to sleep in separate rooms, because you're married now. And couples are supposed to share a room together. <laughs> and, oh my goodness, it's the traditional carry the bride over the threshold scene. Excuse me, while I scream to a pillow. <laughs> okay, let's leave our couple alone for a while, because, face it, we all know what they're up to. And if you don't, why are you watching Bridgerton? Go watch Peppa Pig or Bluey or something. Anything other than this. Even Hyacinth wonders what they're doing, and Mama is just... You don't want to know. But Eloise, you're gonna want to know, so take notes, okay? Well, Mama, I don't want to get married. I want to stay single and let my hair flow in the wind as I ride through the glen, firing arrows into the sunset. But, of course, you don't know that. <laughs> you think because uh, Eloise, because Daphne's getting married, that I want to get married? <sighs> uh-uh. Nope. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You'll change your mind soon, honey. Yeah, okay. Now we're here to celebrate another union because Colin and Marina can't let Daphne have the spotlight for five minutes. Poor Penelope's absolutely heartbroken and Anthony can barely contain his surprise and takes his younger brother into the study for a heart-to-heart -heart chat. And by heart-to-heart, -heart, I mean Anthony telling Colin that this may not be the best idea because one, he barely knows her and he's probably rushing into things, blah, 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 which is kind of true. And two, do you even know what's happening with Marina right now? No? Still not all that? Still haven't talked about that? Maybe you should have got that off the table first. But then they would have, you know, talked about it in town or whatever. Lady Wilson down would have picked it up. Whatever. But, Anthony, to not give your brother your blessing for marriage, which is kind of a big deal, kind of important, it's... Basically useless anyway, since he's probably gonna marry her despite you not giving him your blessing. Hey, at least Daphne and Simon are happy until the Call of Duty, or duties, <laughs> forces them away from each other. Oh, so terrible. Daphne gets to tour the house, catches a bit of baby fever once they see the nursery, and Simon has piles of homework to do. Thanks again, Dad. After that, they have dinner together, talk about renovating the place, and spend an entire evening, and it looks like several days. Hey, look, what a lovely day to go for it. How many? How much of this is there? Like, I am not kidding. Two minutes of this whole sh um, episode is just them doing the do. <laughs> I am not kidding at all. <laughs> and it's all to Taylor Swift's wildest dreams. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's better. Skip a little bit. Colin is going to have another talk with Mama. She agrees that it's all happening so quickly, but she says it's the first relationship he's taken this seriously. Look, when did Colin ever flirt with other girls? I must, I, I must have zoned out, or I must have missed something because I do not remember that. And. 
she's willing to support his decision, no matter how surprising it may be, and no matter how much she's going to miss having him around once he's married. Colin even jokes around and says, Oh, you'll have your hands full without Louise and the other kids, so I think you'll be okay. They hold hands, and it's actually a really sweet and tender moment. And I wish more parents in period dramas were like this instead of just eager to get rid of their kids. <laughs> Penelope is understandably still upset about the union, and is making it more obvious. Like, she's, she's voicing her, you know, distaste, and every time Marina compliments her, she's like, don't, don't mock me, don't pity me, Look, don't even talk to me, I don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> but Marina doesn't know, Marina doesn't know that Penelope has feelings. Like, I, I'm sure if you had brought that up in the beginning, Marina would have backed off. If he just said so. But, and then Penelope is also concerned that once the scandal of Marina's pregnancy gets out, then he'll be made a fool of. You know, it's all just very messy. Also, how lovely is it to actually see Marina seated at the table with the Featherington girls, minus Penelope, and being able to go to the Modiste with Lady Featherington, who is actually being nice for once? Like, how nice is that? So yeah, they go to the Modiste, but because of the financial situation, they can't afford any more dresses. Even though Lady Featherington says, oh, once Colin and Marina are married, then we can pay back any money we're owed. And... But Genevieve's like, nope. Sorry, sorry, that, that can't happen. But then Marina steps in, and she's like, you're French, right? Yeah. What part of France are you from? Uh, and then Marina says, in French, my mother was French, I'm not fooled by this little act that you're playing. So, is, is, is the Medici not even French? We're, ju we're just being fooled. I mean, she's probably not even French in real life, so... <laughs> I guess that's a little play on it, but... Anyway... It's, and then, after that, she's like, oh... She's going to make us our dresses now. She's going to be more cooperative. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, I am. And Lady Featherington looks at her. She didn't know you had it in you, girl. And Marina's like, hmm. <laughs> It's just, it's, that's honestly one of the best moments in the show. I'm not gonna lie. And oddly enough, Eloise saw the whole thing. So... Yeah, because she's getting outfits too, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, small world. So I'm skipping a jump away from all of that. Sam and Daphne are exploring the little town they call home, which is called Cliveden. I forgot to mention that in the script, but I'm just remembering it now. But they run into a bit of an issue after she saves three pigs from becoming bacon in a contest. It's a bit complicated, but... See, things have gotten a little sour since Simon's father died, rents tripled, crops have suffered, and apparently the winner of the contest would have been allowed to sell the meat that he made to the village for the next year and earn a stable income, which is, I guess, a tradition? But Daphne's like, okay, but all three of the pigs are not going to die. They all deserve to be saved. <laughs> Everyone's, like, not pleased. No one's pleased about that. Also, they were standing at the little gate near the pigs, and these two little girls approach uh, Simon and Daphne, and Simon's just smiling at them. It's, it's, like, the cutest thing, and it sparks so much joy. And then there's this other scene where another little girl, like, younger, shrieking like a banshee, comes toward Daphne, and Daphne just manages to calm her down, and Simon's just looking at her, and I can see the gears turning in his, in his um, mind. I think he is afraid to have children, but at the same time, Daphne would make such a wonderful mother, such a wonderful aunt, whatever. They, they sort of talk about that, but then he says, well, I'm so happy that you're happy with just the two of us being together, and she's like, she says, I can't imagine anything better. And it's very, very happy. Very, very happy. 
But a little while later, we find out he's not really comfortable staying at the estate because there are a lot of memories associated with the place and not all of them are good, which I guess is why he was so eager to let Daphne renovate stuff and why the day they went to the village, or I think the day after, I'm not exactly sure, um, you see him moving things from the study to another room. Maybe because his father sat there and he didn't want to sit where his father sat. I don't know. Anyway, all the Featheringtons, this is later by the way, are having dinner with the Bridgertons. Because, you know, we need to get to know the family, right? Right? And it's not going exactly as planned. It's all a bit awkward. And to top it all off, a rather interesting performance by Philippa and Prudence happens. You know, remember the scene in the animated Cinderella where Anastasia and Drizella are practicing the piano and singing? Oh, sweet nightingale. Imagine that, but worse. <laughs> anyway, Colin. Colin cannot stand it at all, so he leaves the room. Penelope goes after him, tells him about Marita's husband. Doesn't bring up the baby, just brings up the husband. But Colin doesn't really care. Because, again, he's flirted with girls before, and it, he, he's okay if they get married to other people. <laughs> And he says, well, Marina and I are together now. Any love before, it's, we're past that. We're going to be together and it's going to be okay. And then Marina joins in the conversation. She admits that she doesn't feel like she fits in with the family because the conversation at the table was so awkward. So then he assures her that, you know what? It's okay. You fit in with me. We'll make our own family and you'll fit in perfectly with us. And she's like, aww. And then he says, if you want us to be married in like a couple days, I know a place. I can have the whole thing settled in a couple days. We can go there and then we'll be married and then it will be done. And then she's like, oh, okay. And then Penelope's like, um, no. No, you are not doing that. So she has a plan. The next night, she fakes a cold to get out of a dinner with some acquaintance of her mother's to snoop around Penelope's room and uncovers the deed that her mother did. Remember in one of the episodes where um, Lady Featherington wrote a forged letter from Marina's husband saying, Oh, I don't love you anymore. I ne don't ever want to see you again. Every moment spent away from you is a blessing. Whatever. And... But Marina says, okay, well, even if that were true, why hasn't he written to me? And <laughs> then she burns the letters like an Hamilton. I'm watching it burn. And finds out Penelope loves Colin. Like, they have a little bit of an argument before that. And Marina says, you love him. That's why you've been trying to meddle in our relationship. That's why... You've been, you know, acting weird lately. And Penelope says, Nuh-uh, you don't want to know what you're talking about. Marina says, yeah. Yeah, I do. I know. I know you better than you know yourself. But I have to do what's best for me and my child. And if that's Mary and Colin, I'm sorry. But your love is one-sided. That's just the way it is. It actually gets kind of sad, so... It's, it's just like watching a soap opera. This whole show is like watching a soap opera. So the last few minutes of the episode, I'm just going to cut short. Because it, it gets a little dramatic too. So Daphne asks one of the maids how a woman comes to be with a child. Again, my mom never told her anything. <laughs> I mean, I learned about it when I was at, an, at a good age. And... Daphne doesn't know, and she's 22 years old, supposedly. Wouldn't you think that would be a good age to start talking about that? Especially when you're courting someone, or you're gonna be married, or whatever. Like, don't, don't you think that, that would have been an appropriate time to talk about it? Anyway, she finds out that it's not that Simon can't have children, it's that he doesn't want to. We know that. We know the reason why. But she doesn't, yet. Look. 
That's another thing. I wish they would just talk about it. Sit down together and talk. And maybe Daphne could understand. And maybe... And that's why Simon didn't want to marry Daphne at first. Because he knew she wanted to have a family. And he didn't want to ruin that for her. So... Yeah. Anyway... Daphne starts to question everything. It's... She looks into the distance. There's an awkward moment at the dinner table. Next night they do the do. Boundaries are crossed. Simon's stutter comes back. Now everything is ruined. Everyone's miserable. What a great episode, everyone. I'll see you at the meeting tomorrow. <laughs>